Well, I think it's safe to say we are watching this election being rigged right before our very eyes. Now, obviously, we could say that with a nomination process, as well as the latest polls that have just come out. We'll have more on that coming up later. But now we're watching the media engage in an all-out assault on the democratic process. They have thrown their objectivity out the window, all in an effort to dump Trump. So now this, the new establishment smear campaign is to declare that Trump is mentally unfit to be the president. And this is, of course, despite all signs pointing to the fact that Hillary is mentally incapacitated. So this campaign began with Barack Obama declaring Trump unfit to serve. And then there was another petition launched by California Democratic Rep Karen Bass demanding that Trump undergo a mental health evaluation. Um, saying, you know, he appears to exhibit all the symptoms of the mental disorder, narcissistic personality disorder, which that goes for most people who are in politics, most people in positions of power. You kind of have to be a narcissist. I mean, but he's not mentally unfit. This man is an incredibly successful entrepreneur. He's raised a really beautiful family who seem to be, you know, pretty well put together. And then now the DC Whispers blog is actually confirming that there is indeed a smear campaign uh, attack to declare Trump mentally incompetent. It's in full swing. And it notes that these forces don't need actual medical verification of their claims. They just want to have it confirmed within the court of public opinion. And this is what we're seeing the media doing as well. We're seeing a lot of people on Twitter now going on with this narrative. Um, and they're kind of saying that some G GOP insiders are hoping that this will be enough to force Trump to drop out and there the daily caller is reporting that there still are some inside the gop that are working actively to replace him so we're also seeing this running alongside another media hoax which of course they are saying donald trump might drop out of the race now alex jones broke this down a little earlier today ladies and gentlemen the dirty tricks have now gone to the next level the controlled media came out yesterday and said there are rumors from the Republican leadership and rumors from other sources that Donald Trump is going to drop out. There are rumors uh, that he's mentally ill. There are rumors that his children are against him. All of it lies. This is just like what we saw in Iowa whenever Carson was neck and neck or ahead of Cruz. And then they announced, as soon as they knew he'd gotten on his airplane to fly to the next state, as soon as it was like six o'clock at night, that he had dropped out of the race so that another 10% or so would swing themselves to Cruz, which they did do, so he got a second place showing. It was a big scandal when that happened, but notice there's no scandal now because the mainstream media as a whole lies together and says, did you hear Donald Trump's dropping out? Also, we've seen Reuters and others put out polls where they admit they sample 10 to 15% more Democrats in the poll. So they go out and they sample 65% Democrats or 60% Democrats in Democrat-held areas already and then skew it that Hillary's 10 points ahead. That's how they got rid of the 10-point lead that Donald Trump had just a week and a half ago. Then they tell you it's all happening because of what he's done. All of this anonymous as well. Well, I'm going to anonymously tell you something. Hillary Clinton's got a brain tumor the size of a watermelon. And Hillary Clinton's going to drop out of the race tomorrow at high noon. And Hillary Clinton also um, is a Chinese jet pilot for Pluto. See, none of that's true. But see, I could go and say that that was the case. Maybe I will just to educate people on how they're being conned and manipulated. Because this so-called media that we're fighting with is not real. It is total criminal scientific fraud. It isn't liberal bias. It is designed to absolutely turn this country against ourselves. I'll be on the radio in a couple hours, 11 a.m. Central, with big breaking news, Infowars.com. Be there. And a contributor to the L.A. Times admits that the media is ditching its objectivity to attack Trump. Uh, this is the L.A. Times contributor, Justin Romano. He said that the media attacking Trump may soon find themselves covering Trump's inauguration because the public's trust in the mainstream media is at an all-time low. He says any objective observer of the news media's treatment of Trump can certainly conclude that reporters are taking a side in this election and they don't have to be wearing a button that says I'm with her for this to be readily apparent. The irony is that the media's Trump bashing may wind up having the exact opposite of its intended effect. 
Of course, we saw that same exact thing happening uh, in the UK with the Brexit vote. There was all this hype and it had the exact opposite effect. Polls, of course, show that journalism is one of the least respected professions in the country. And of course, Trump is doing a really good job calling out the media organizations for their bias. Widespread slanted reporting, it's bound to reinforce this point and to backfire. And of course, these continued media attacks against Donald Trump and their obvious bias are really just working to expose their true agenda, which is to maintain the establishment's new world order. War. War never changes. Since the dawn of humankind, when our ancestors first discovered the killing power of rock and bone, blood has been spilled in the name of everything, from God to justice to simple psychotic rage. And blood is spilling regularly as the engineers of order out of chaos draw nearer and nearer to the heart of civilization with every intention of snuffing it out. These mad children of Albert Pike's nightmare world war prophecy ruling us all from their pampered hubris ridden existence. Donald Trump quickly becoming the symbol of America's growing desperation of escaping a new world order, has yet again been targeted by another globalist puppet's ivory tower. Bloomberg writes, French President Francois Hollande expressed extreme revulsion at Donald Trump's excesses and warned against the authoritarian tone adopted by the Republican nominee and billionaire reality television celebrity. Olan said, in the U.S., one of the world's greatest democracies, maybe the greatest democracy, where democracy was born before the French one, we see some excesses that are sickening. Hollande added, as if sick to his stomach, when Trump speaks ill of a soldier, of the memory of a soldier. Who on earth are these marionettes of Illuminism to even consider calling out Donald Trump and essentially once again twisting his statements? Olan defends a man with Muslim Brotherhood ties, Kazir Khan, chomping at the bit to bring in an anti-constitutional Sharia law into the United States, while Olan's own country is under regular attack by the radical jihadists he pretends he can't stop. Well, do you know any major Arab ally that embraces ISIL? I know major Arab allies who fund them. And Hillary and Obama, ignoring the families affected by the criminal decisions surrounding Benghazi, ignored for years, only to be mentioned in speeches as a final insult to those families, the military, and the American people. Bull feathers. That's just plain old bull. I know what she said, and not only did she say it, but Obama said the same thing to me, and Panetta, and Biden, and, and Susan Rice. I went up to all of them, begging them to tell me what happened. And they, they all said that it was the video, mm -hmm. every one of them. Or the lawsuit Obama filed in Ohio, when 15 Ohio military groups went to court to oppose an offensive lawsuit that challenged a law allowing military members to vote on days when the rest of the state cannot. Or how about Obama's depletion of the military, to the point to which, as WorldNet Daily writes, the U.S. military is shedding so many troops and weapons, it is only marginally able to defend the nation and falls short of the Obama administration's national security strategy, according to a report from February of 2015 from the Heritage Foundation. Do I think that uh, our actions in any way violate the War Powers Resolution? The answer is no. President Obama. What part of Commander-in-Chief do you not understand? It is you and your understudy, Hillary Clinton, that are unfit to be president. John Bound for Infowars.com. Now, obviously, whenever Trump makes an outrageous comment, it gets 24-7 coverage in the news. But for some reason, the media is curiously silent on Trump calling Hillary the founder of ISIS. So this was uh, said on Wednesday, Trump said that she should get an award from Islamists for founding the Islamic State, claiming her policies as Secretary of State precipitated the group's formation. Of course, the crowd went wild, locking, uh, chanting, lock her up. He was drawing on a list of all the flaws in U.S. policy in Libya and the Middle East, laying all the blame on his opponent, Clinton. He said it was Hillary Clinton. She should get an award from them as the founder of ISIS. That's what it was, her weakness, her weak policies. So, but in uh, WikiLeaks actually has come out even further. Julian Assange has revealed that the U.S. 
uh, Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton actually earned $100,000 while she was director of a company tasked to arm the rebels in Syria. This was in an interview with Democracy Now! Uh, he said that while she was secretary of state, she was also the director of the French company Lafarge, which was handling the U.S.'s secret mission in Syria that aimed to topple the government of Assad. Uh, he said Hillary's hacked emails include info on Hillary arming the rebels in Syria, which of course ultimately became the Islamic State militant group. He said there is proof within those emails she knowingly armed jihadists, and also the contents of those emails will confirm that Clinton dismissed the reluctance of Pentagon officials to overthrow Gaddafi, uh, they, and they also predicted the possible outcome of the war in Libya. This is what we're witnessing today. So there you go, reckless Hillary is gonna be reckless as president as well, and she is going to be putting the security of this nation uh, under threat. And now we're seeing, of course, that the media is still trying to push that con angle, but people are fighting back now, right there, live on CNN. So CNN really kept pushing for the uh, Benghazi victim's father to say, shouldn't Trump apologize to the con? Shouldn't he apologize? Shouldn't? And he flipped the script on him, and he said, you know who really I think should apologize is Hillary Clinton for lying to the American families who lost their loved ones, as well as to the American public. She's the one who should apologize. In fact, she's even doubled down and called us liars, which is not appropriate at all because, because she's lying. And then they were like, well, well, who are you gonna vote for? And he said, you know what, my son would still be alive if Mrs. Clinton was performing her job properly as Secretary of State. So in good conscience, I cannot vote for the person who was directly responsible for the death of my son. There's only two choices. Obviously, I support Donald Trump because for him, national security as well as the economy are the two most important issues voters are gonna have to decide upon next November. Karen Vaughn, who was the mother of Navy SEAL Aaron Vaughn, who was killed in Afghanistan, she said, you know what, Obama used the death of my son for a photo op when asked, you know, should Trump apologize to the Khan family? She said, when my son was killed, it was one of the largest loss of life in the history of naval special warfare. There were over 30 families at Dover Air Base waiting for our son's bodies to be returned from Afghanistan. The president was specifically asked not to bring any media, to not make this a media event, but lo and behold, he shows up with the camera, and the next day, our pictures, or his picture, saluting the caskets of our boys, was plastered over every outlet in America. So people need to be more outraged by what was done over than someone making a flipping a flippant comment. And indeed, with Hillary, there should be more outrage with Hillary calling these grieving parents liars. I'm Margaret Hell reporting for Infowars.com. I'm here in downtown Austin to find out what everyday people are making of the headlines. Now, the LA Times, New York Times, CNN, everywhere across the country, major media outlets are saying that Trump is going to leave the election. They're saying they're placing their bets. They're saying if and when he does, that Paul Ryan will step up. I want to find out if everyday people think there's any merit to this. Did you hear these media reports that Trump is going to be dropping out of the election? Totally, totally have heard it. Uh, I think it was his plan from the beginning. Well, he's not the one saying it. It's everybody else. Well, I mean, you can't give the, like, if, if it's your plan, you don't want to give away the plan before the plan is ended. So, like, of course, everybody else is going to talk about it, but he's not because, like, why would you give it away? Well, I wouldn't always put my trust in the media, but this time I really hope they're right. L.A. Times, CNN, New York Times, they're saying, they're speculating that he's going to drop out and they're placing bets on it. Why do you think they're doing that? Well, because he's sort of a fool and doesn't have a grip on what modern America is and just the inclusiveness of all of us and he I, I think that he actually is sort of clueless. So. I don't believe that. <laughs> Why don't you believe it? He's a uh, attention whore. It's probably a publicity stunt. <laughs> you know I think the whole media thing they, they just want to keep the story going. It's like always let's keep this story running. If he leaves I, I kind of doubt he, he'll leave to be honest because I, his ego's a little bit too large for him to really step down. Anybody's better than Trump. <laughs> Actually, somebody dead would probably be worse than Trump, but other than that, anybody but Trump. So you're a Hillary supporter? I was a Bernie supporter, but I take Hillary. There's never been anybody more qualified in terms of background and resume to be president. He's not saying that he's dropping out. He's saying he's staying in. It's the best week he's had, but the media is saying that he's dropping out. So I just want to tell you, the campaign is doing really well. It's never been so well united. We started on June 16th. 
I would say right now it's the best in terms of being united that it's been since we began. Yeah, well, he'd probably be better off if, if he wanted to drop out. The money might be there for him because the way politicians are, if you drop out, you're going to win anyway. You think if he drops out, he's going to win? Absolutely. Do you believe them? No. He has a lot of money, doesn't he? Well, he's not the one that's saying it. It's uh, CNN, LA Times, New York Times. They're speculating on that he's probably going to drop out. Why would they be doing that? So people will find someone else to vote for? You think they're doing it so people will find someone else to vote for? There's confidence in him. Don't believe anything anybody says, including me or Alex Jones, especially the mainstream media. Go look it up for yourself. Use your own brains. Don't let other people use your brain for you. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, August 4th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the establishment's new dirty trick is to say that the Donald is dropping out of the race. Then, Hillary is accused of arming ISIS and... Go ahead. Make my day. Trigley puffs everywhere get called out by Clint Eastwood as the actor states they're a part of the generation. That's next. We've got Clint Eastwood coming out, says that he's challenging Obama's generation, just effing it over it. I don't normally paraphrase profanity here on air, but when Clint Eastwood says it, it's not profanity. This is Ashley Beckford with Infowars.com. I'm joined here in the studio with Joe Biggs, and today we're going to be talking about the terror threats surrounding the Rio Olympics. Well, it's not even just the terror threats. It's the threats in general surrounding Rio de Janeiro as a whole. I mean, it has some of the most pollute air uh, horrible sand, fecal matter in it, and water. So let's talk about some of the statistics on that. Uh, this is an article by QZ.com. It says, Rio's most dangerous levels of deadly air pollution are at the Olympic Stadium. Athletes competing in the 2016 Rio Olympics might be able to avoid swallowing uh, Guanabara Bay's water as they've been advised, but there's no getting around the city's dirty air. An air analysis by Reuters and Brazilian researchers from the University of Sao Paulo found high levels of fine particulate matter. Now, in Rio, some 5,400 people died from air pollution in 2014, exceeding the city's murder rate of 3,117. So that's a lot of people dying from air pollution alone. Wow. You have over 6.4 million people in Rio, and you have some 500,000 people, spectators, coming in to that area as well. And you have the worries of Zika virus and all this. It's going to be crazy to see what's going on. Not only do you have to worry about some jihadi coming in and shooting you up or using a dirty bomb and blowing you up, but you got to worry about the air you're breathing, the sand you're walking on. Uh, Brazil is the seventh deadliest spot for shark attacks in the world. So you've got that as well, because a lot of these spectators are going to be staying in these hotels, wanting to go out to the beaches and hang out. It's going to be a very chaotic scenario. That's true. Um, I'm reading this article here uh, about these NBC uh, producer, uh, Bob Costas. He actually uh, has been talking about how we just need to keep our fingers crossed when it comes to the Rio Olympics, because some of the things besides the terror attacks uh, that are feared by ISIS are doping scandals. A lot of uh, Russian athletes have actually been getting suspended uh, because they've been caught, uh, you know, taking extra um, enhance enhancements. Uh, you have the Zika virus alerts. Um, Brazil is, I believe, the hotbed of the uh, Zika um uh, threat right now, uh, the Zika virus. It's uh, widespread there. Uh, they ha they're they saying that only, a, a recent study is saying that only three, between three and 37 people out of that 500,000 that are going to be visiting uh, would be expected to go home with Zika. But we just had our first birth um, uh, in Europe. I believe it was in Spain, in Catalonia, uh, where, uh, you know, we had this first Zika uh, microcephaly uh, born child. So I think uh, that it's very uh, risky for the Yale School of Public Health to say that the risk is ne negligible when we have so many people traveling there and such a high rate of this mosquito going around. And well, they always play this game where they try not to panic people, but at the end of the day, you need to 
install a little bit of fear because that helps you stay alive. Fear is not bad. Right. People always want to say, oh, it's fear mongering when you bring up Zika. It's fear mongering when you talk about the possible or possibility of a terror attack. Fear keeps you alive. When you're in combat, that's one thing that keeps you alive is the fear of dying because it makes you more aware of your surroundings. It makes you pay attention more and it makes you take more precautions uh, that most people normally wouldn't that are being complacent and calm. And in right. New York Magazine, they said, as if Brazil wasn't already having a disastrous lead up to the Olympics, there's a, the Zika epidemic to consider. The country has seen 166,000 suspected and confirmed cases of the mosquito-borne virus. And uh, we now know that it can be also passed on during unprotected sex. You're going to sure. have people from all over the world going out there, meeting, using Tinder, hooking up, going out to bars. It's going to be a cesspool of, you know, bad air, sand, Zika virus. It's going to be out of control. So a lot of people need to remain calm. Uh, fear's good because, like I said before, it keeps you alive. Be aware of your surroundings. Uh, pay attention to what's going on. Use bug spray. If you're staying in an area that's kind of opened up like a cabana, get one of those mosquito tents to go around your bed. Don't take any chances. You know, use all those proper uh, procedures that you could do to combat that. Don't go out. Don't be complacent because you could be a victim. That's true. And it's it's weird for them to actually tell people not to be afraid, especially pregnant women or women who are expected to get pregnant, because another study I'm reading uh, from The Guardian here, the Zika risk uh, at Rio Olympics are negligible, uh, says this Yale report. But Another study has said that 1.65 million women of childbearing age in Central and South America will be infected with the Zika virus during the current outbreak. So when you have statistics like that, how can you not be fearful? How can you not, you know, try to pay attention to, of course, bug spray and stuff? But what they're saying is that they're not going to be able to even control the population of these mosquitoes. What they're doing right now with uh, spraying and everything isn't working. It's just spreading and you have a population density of 13,000 people per square mile. So there's only, you know... We have uh, Olympians spread. that are tweeting out pictures. Hope Solo, she's a soccer player. She's the goalie. She says, not sharing this, get your own. She's got a mosquito mask and netting around her face, holding up insect repellent. And then you have another athlete who's outside spraying his arms with uh, mosquito stuff. You have another girl. She's a Chinese gymnast who uh, has a screen over her uh, bed to protect herself from mosquitoes and Zika virus. And if you look at the temperature, if you look at the, the swamps, uh, the muddy areas, the bad water, uh, basically there was a guy who flew over in a helicopter and he said a lot of the waterways looked like sewage. And that is a breeding ground for mosquitoes. So it's like this perfect storm for that. So right. Zika is something you should care about. We've seen how the CDC handled Ebola, said it's not that big of a deal. It's not going to happen in America. And they dropped the ball in that big time. So don't ever take... What the CD says, you know, uh, as a, the word of God. Exactly. Uh, look at the exact, you know, look at the uh, the risks, and then come up with your own plan because that's your life. Don't go off what someone else is saying back in Atlanta, Georgia. Right, exactly. And we have a tourism even in Florida that's falling right now because of the recent cases. I believe it's a very small area of Miami where Zika is really flourishing there. So to say that it's not a threat and that people, you know, can just put on bug spray and don't worry too much about it and keep coming to these tourist areas, it's really uh, it's, it's not a reasonable. Well, if you don't have to uh, if you're not completely worried about Zika, or the dangers in the sand or the water and the fecal matter, the matter that you could die from, uh, well, guess what? Real police aren't gonna be there for you. Right. A real police tell tourists they won't be able to protect them. Violence is on the rise and police officers at, are at loggerheads with the Rio state government after claiming they've not been paid for months. Uh, the message from police to tourists is clear. We won't be able to protect you. The state's police officers vented their anger with a sign saying, welcome to hell outside Rio's main airport. Police and firefighters don't get paid. Whoever comes to Rio de Janeiro will not be safe. And this is happening leading up in the, in the weeks to the Olympics, which actually start on Friday. Right. Rio de Janeiro Mayor Eduardo Paez told CNN this week the state was doing a terrible job in regards to uh, security in the lead up to the games. Brazilian officials put on a united front to assure the world that Rio was up to task, even though the mayor and all these other people and police and first responders say, don't come here. And now on top of that, you have police. They have arrested 12 suspected uh, terrorists uh, trying to pull off a terror attack in Brazil. Brazilian police uh, arrested 12 suspected 
of planning this terrorist attack during the Olympics, the group was inspired by ISIS and mostly organized online. Wow. Not every single one of these groups has to be directly affiliated. They see what happens in Orlando, they see what happens in San Bernardino, in Paris, you know, wherever, and they become inspired, uh, and their ideologies are the same as the radical jihadists known as ISIS. And if you don't have to worry about Zika killing you, or the fact that you could be mugged, stabbed, raped, or killed, uh, guess what? ISIS feared to be plotting nuclear uh, attack at the Olympics with a dirty bomb. So, yay, that sounds like a great time. Yeah, and this is why a lot of, unfortunately, the athletes aren't even going to be showing up. Uh, they actually had, during the open ceremony, they were, uh, opening ceremony, they were planning on having Giselle Bündchen ripped off the catwalk and robbed in a mockery of uh, how Brazil has the highest rate of robbery in its history right now. So, uh, you know, there's just so many reasons why people uh, shouldn't go, but if you have to go, you know, if you're performing or whatever it may be, you just want to participate in it. Uh, uh, what do you think people should do? Because there's a heightened service demand that's going to be happening with communications. you got to remain situationally aware of your right. surroundings. When you go into a building, find the exit. Uh, find the quickest ways for you to get out of an area. We saw the attacks that happened outside of the Bataclan Theater and the cafes surrounding it. Be situationally aware. Complacency kills. Keep your eyes open. Make notes of the areas you go to. Keep uh, notes of people that you think are acting suspicious. And if you see them again, it's probably something by design, that they're planning something. So keep your eyes open and don't be complacent and everything can be okay. Excellent. Well, I hope everyone stays safe and uh, stay tuned at Infowars.com for more special reports. Jakari Jackson, I'm going to talk to you here today about the PC culture and how it's pretty much engulfed life here in the United States of America. And one person coming out against this is Clint Eastwood. And it seems like it's these uh, old Hollywood type of guys who come out and just say common sense, whether it was previously guys like Kurt Russell talking about guns here in America or now Clint talking about the PC generation. And he actually used some language I may have to bleep here. We're really living in a pretty generation. Everybody's walking on eggshells. We see people accusing people of being racist and all kinds of stuff. Now, this is in response to an Esquire interview that Clint did, and they were asking him questions about Donald Trump. Hey, what do you think about Donald Trump? And a lot of people came out after this interview was published, and they attacked Clint. They said, oh, you're siding with the racist. You're agreeing with everything he said. So he's saying, I'm not supporting what the guy says. He says in the interview, he has said a lot of dumb things, but so have all of them. He realizes that all these guys say stupid things, including Hillary, who said that she likes to hang out with black people and eat hot sauce. Now, is that notable? Yeah. Did I go home and cry about it? No. Now, with that introduction out the way, let's talk about the political spectrum of this, because we see people over and over, time and time again, they talk about somebody like Trump. They say he's a Nazi. They say he's Hitler. I've gone out to rallies and seen people have political cartoons of uh, Trump being fornicated by a donkey. And that's all well and good and fun and games if you're a leftist. But if you dare criticize Hillary in any fashion, then you're just a bigot. You just don't want to see a woman in the White House. And this next article is definitely going to trigger <laughs> some of those liberals. Democrats slam mean parade float depicting Hillary Clinton in prison. Of course, taking the Hillary for prison meme all the way. And uh, as you can see right there, it's uh, uh, quite the, uh, the spectacle. And they had little kids throw water balloons at it. And as I was saying, you can criticize other people. But if you dare criticize Hillary, even on legitimate things like Benghazi or other things, you talk about the uh, sexual allegations of her husband, you're just a bigot. You don't want to see any of that. And that's the political double standard of this whole uh, PC culture. We can talk about one, but you can't talk about the other. And that's really what's this, uh, diminishing the uh, quality of life or one of the things diminishing the quality of life here in the United States of America. And as uh, I round this out, uh, one of the big things that people don't like right now is firearms in the country. And of course, you can see arguments for and against uh, various things. Of course, you don't like to see the uh, bad mass shootings happening, but you also don't hear the stories too often of some little kid who's home alone shooting the bad intruder. That usually does not make national news. And recently, we had the situation at the RNC and the DNC, and it was big hype up by the media. They're saying, oh, there are going to be armed uh, open carriers out there. It's going to be uh, Black Lives Matter or the Black Panthers, excuse me. I think they said we're going to be out there carrying their, their arms in an open way. And they said it's going to be a big deal and you know, people can get shot and there's going to be tons of arrest over it. Well, we have this article here, Cleveland PD, zero arrest for open carry at the RNC. Now, while the Cleveland Police Department had to deal with a great many things and they did arrest 23 people, none of those 
or for open carry or firearms related offenses. So it's just uh, the big scare tactic. As much as they want to say the right use scare tactics to hype people up and get them to react a certain way, but the left was hyping people up with these open carriers. We saw it even on the late night talk shows on the on those liberal networks. Oh, people out here open carry. And like, yeah, nobody got shot. Just like when they do the open carry here in Texas. I've been to a conservative 10 open carry margin. That's very conservative. Uh, nobody's ever been shot that I'm aware of. And that's just the things that we continue to see as they continue to hype up this fear and nothingness. You can find more reports on Infowars.com. What on earth could be the reason behind Hillary Clinton's bizarre behavior in recent weeks? Weird seizures, psychotic facial tics, over-exaggerated reactions, coughing fits, strange lesions on her tongue. Is Hillary on the verge of a mental breakdown due to stress, or are her strange outbursts linked to a medical condition? Is Clinton suffering from actual brain damage, or are these odd manifestations just an expression of some kind of narcissistic personality disorder. I talked privately with psychologists and psychiatrists to try and answer this question, and here's what they told me. We know Hillary fainted and hit her head back in 2012, leading to a blood clot in her brain. In almost half of sufferers, this leads to side effects and neurological issues. According to neurologist Dr. Daniel Kasiche, Hillary has post-concussion syndrome and cannot tolerate stress-inducing environments. Experts told me that this footage likely shows Hillary having a mild Jacksonian type of seizure caused by a side effect of the blood clot. Notice how shocked the reporter is by her behavior and how Hillary tries to turn it into a joke but then continues having the seizure. Notice how it was triggered by several different people talking to her at once, which is a known cause of seizures. Is this why Hillary refuses to give press conferences? We see similar traits in this footage, the crazy eye movements, the overreaction to external stimuli, the weird elongated bathroom break in the middle of a televised debate, which insiders said was a flare up of problems from her brain injury. And do we believe Secretary Clinton will be coming around the corner any minute? Reports that she can barely stand up after giving a speech. The coughing fits, which is yet another side effect of strokes. <coughs> Difficulty swallowing, choking, a garbled voice. Again, all side effects of strokes. Guess what else is a side effect of strokes? Spontaneous outbursts of laughter that go on for longer than is socially comfortable. I know Bernie Sanders said that, um, quote, the American people are sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails. <laughs> but there are a lot of people who are not. Well. <laughs> uh, including, including FBI officials. Some aspects of Hillary's freakish behavior could be explained by the blood clot, but others could be a manifestation of her notoriously unstable personality and even drug abuse. Her sudden, profound, and disproportionate bouts of rage, confirmed by former Secret Service agents, former K-9 handlers, and her own campaign insiders. An anonymous campaign aide told the New York Post that Hillary unleashed, quote, screaming childlike tantrums that have left staff members in tears and unable to work. Byrne paints a disturbing picture of what he claims Hillary is like behind the scenes. When something goes wrong, she seems to go right off the scale. Instead of trying to fix what the problem is, she, uh, she goes right to anger and, and berates who she holds responsible for. Byrne told me that as First Lady, Hillary actually hit a Secret Riley, Service agent in the Bill back of the head Biden, with a Bible. She became angry about something. She had a Bible in her hand. She didn't actually throw it at him. As he described it to me, she leaned forward and kind of punched him in the head him in the head with it. He says the Clinton White House was like a battlefield and the president showed up one morning with a black eye to prove it. They even said they had to give her quote chill pills to calm her down. These outbursts are likely linked to years of persistent drug abuse. Her susceptibility to rage whenever she's challenged would also explain the complete dearth of press conferences and why her campaign builds human walls to keep reporters away. Hillary is also likely on the autism spectrum. She has virtually no empathy for other people. 
One expert told me that Hillary has high-functioning autism with attendant sociopathy. We came, we saw, and he died. <laughs> this would explain the exaggerated expressions. They're to compensate for what psychiatrists call emotional illiteracy. Could this be why her efforts to connect with people seem so forced, so insincere? I'm just chilling in Cedar Rapids. There's even speculation that she could have contracted syphilis from sex addict Bill Clinton, which may explain the apparent lesion on her tongue. Then you have the memory lapses. Huma Aberdeen saying Hillary is, quote, often confused. The pathological lies about being under Bosnian sniper fire. The lies about her email scandal. All signs of cognitive impairment, personality disorder, or both. <coughs> All this, while the Clinton campaign claims her only issues are allergies and hyperthyroidism. Hillary could be mentally incapacitated and incapable of handling stress even before she takes on the most stressful job in the world. Barack Obama claims Donald Trump is unfit to be president because of his rhetoric. But is Hillary Clinton physically unfit to be president? Ladies and gentlemen, in the last week, we have seen Donald Trump go from surging in the polls to now losing percentages at an increasing rate. Now, we're going to discuss why that's going on on the nightly news tonight, but let's look at some of the facts here. Now, a lot of these polls are asking more than just who are you voting for for president. 61% of voters think Hillary Clinton is dishonest, yet somehow she's opening up a lead on Donald Trump. 12% of Republicans are backing Hillary Clinton, while only 5% of Democrats are backing Donald Trump. For the first time in this election cycle, we're seeing a Libertarian and the Green Party candidates enter these polls, and the results have not helped Donald Trump, but Hillary Clinton. When asked who's qualified to be president, 65% said Hillary Clinton versus 43% from Trump. An interesting thing that 61% would disprove of Hillary Clinton's honesty, but say she's qualified to be president. Based on temperament, 64% say that Hillary Clinton has the advantage, while 37% go for Trump. 72% think Clinton has the knowledge to serve more effectively, while 40% would say the same for Donald Trump. Project 538 has broken down this election by the Electoral College based on these polls and are currently giving Hillary Clinton 335 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 202 and now give Hillary Clinton a 77% chance of winning the general election. Every major poll that the New York Times studied has Hillary Clinton ahead of Donald Trump. This is a phenomenon that we did not see last week. According to the New York Times in a Sunday review, Cliff Zukin claims that the election polling is in fact a disaster. I quote, election polling is in near crisis and we pollsters know it. So what's the solution? There isn't one. Our old paradigm has broken down. On Sunday, Breitbart's News Daily with Sirius XM host Alex Marlowe, political strategist Pat Cadell outlined his charge that Reuters tampered with its own daily tracking poll to manufacture a sudden surge for Hillary Clinton. They not only changed their formula to put Hillary ahead, they went back and changed the results for a week of results where Trump was ahead and then they turn those into Hillary leads. They also erased all the former polling uh, off the site. They didn't tweak their procedure, they cooked it. Never in my life have I seen a news organization and a supposedly reputable poll do something so dishonest. They have made a switch as much as nine points in their results from the, from the beginning of last week, 25th and 26th. It is beyond doubt 
the most outrageous thing. And, and this is what the media is willing to do to try to elect her. You must go to the real issue, though, Alex, which is this poll is nothing but a part of a media offensive in the 45 years since I was a child in presidential, top-level presidential campaigns. I have never seen the media on such a jihad and so involved in hiding facts and not following up. And this is a crisis of the democracy, what the press is now doing. Now, if we're worried about polling fraud, we also need to be aware of election fraud. Homeland Security Chief Jay Johnson has said he has concerns that hackers could infiltrate the voting system. Jay Johnson said Wednesday he is increasingly concerned that hackers could infiltrate the nation's electoral system and said the Obama administration is considering ways to bolster it from attacks. The website TrueDemocracyParty.net has made a report on voting machines. They've also shared multiple YouTube videos that show how these voting machines can not work. Massive potential documented voting machine fraud has led the True Democracy Party to one conclusion. You cannot trust voting machines. So these are the facts regarding the current polls in the 2016 presidential race. Joining me now in studio is Owen Schroyer. Now, Owen, this is pretty incredible. They're already kind of preparing everyone that this election is going to be rigged. You can't trust the voting machines. And we're seeing now how they are rigging the polls. Break this down for us a little bit. I mean, obviously, we know that polls can be swayed, but how are they kind of gaming the numbers here? Well, and that's what they do, too. They groom you for their overall agenda. And what we're seeing now is all the headlines are showing that Donald Trump is now losing to Hillary Clinton, and Clinton has been surging since the completion of the Democratic National Convention. But when we looked at some of these numbers, specifically when we looked at the McClatchy poll, it shows that 36% of the people polled were actually Democrats. Another 37% were independent, um, in which case I would say most of those people are probably Democrats or leaning left uh, at least in this election, right. so these are that's not a that fair are, number. These, these are the people that are really swayed by the media who are saying, you know, wow, Trump's outrageous, he's saying these terrible things, I guess I should vote for Hillary. Well, and how do you explain this, Leanne? 61% of voters think Hillary Clinton is dishonest, yet in the same poll, she surges ahead of Trump 10 points. So, so what does that tell you? Does that tell you that people are convinced Donald Trump is a bad candidate or does it tell you that they are completely just rigging these polls that it's just right. made up statistics right and of course it's always the way that they ask these questions and also interesting to note that they do so many polls before the elections but they don't ever do any exit polling data to see you know are we having the same people voting um, as the results are showing so they don't ever do the polls afterward and it's you know it's curious well, and the timing is really key here, too, where after the complete just destruction that was the Democratic National Convention, really it was a failure, I think, right. to an outside observer or to anybody who was there and saw the protesters. So now they want to claim Clinton surging. But we also have to think about the fact that for the first time, they're including Jill Stein and Gary Johnson in these polls. And what they're claiming is that it's polling from both parties. But I think when you have most of the people being interviewed as Democrats, you're gonna have that polling from the Republican people you're polling, not the Democratic people who are gonna vote for Hillary Clinton. So I, I would say that it's a, it's, a, it's a very timely thing they're trying to do right now, on top of the fact they're saying that Trump might drop out of the race. Right. So it's amazing how this has been perfectly timed, perfectly encapsulated, on top of what I think was the big bombshell to this surge for Hillary Clinton, was the Khan and Trump debates, mm -hmm. Trump was surging to that right. point. He'd never been more popular. All of a sudden, this stuff comes out with Khan, and it's perfect timing for the mainstream media to run these polls, uh, skew these numbers with the people they're polling, and use the Trump-Khan debate as kind of the you know, battleground that was what started the downward slide of Donald Trump. Right. Exactly, because you're seeing even now the media, that's they're still focusing on on that, bringing out Benghazi victims, parents or some other gold star family members saying, 
you know, shouldn't he apologize? Shouldn't he? And they're even flipping the script saying, no, Hillary Clinton should apologize. She's the one that's actually done this stuff. And, you know, I was watching MSNBC earlier and they were reporting on how Trump said he saw a video or something uh, of the four hundred million dollar exchange. He could have been talking about a video report that he saw about this. But they're they're reporting about that, not the actual news that was this ransom payment to Iran. So that's what the media is doing is they're only focusing on what they want to focus on. And people really need to wake up and pay attention to the fact that the media is in an all out assault against Donald Trump because they do not want him to win. They're totally rigging this thing for Hillary Clinton because she is their establishment candidate. Well, let's keep in mind, they already stole it from Bernie. This is the same Democratic Party that had dead people voting for Obama. (laughs) And I think we're reaching an interesting dynamic here, Leanne, where what is going to win out in the end? Because we know that the people don't trust the mainstream news. We've seen that in polls. So what dynamic is going to win here? Is the dynamic of the American people realizing that the mainstream news is not for the truth? Or will the mainstream news propaganda win out and defeat what the people are actually thinking and feeling? Right. And I think all of those people in the media are really going to be in for a shock when they're either A, out of a job or B, out of freedom in this country if Hillary Clinton wins. Owen, thank you so much. And thank you guys for tuning into the show tonight. We will see you here again tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central.